Mrs May took, I think, sort of two immediate steps. One was to make it absolutely clear, and I'd like to make it clear, that uh, Brexit means Brexit, that the government are taking forward um, uh, absolutely um, the mandate on which they will agree to then take forward the decision to trigger Article 50, which under the Lisbon Treaty is the manner by which member states would apply to leave, and that there will be a national consensus behind that mandate. And she made it very clear that she drew some lessons from the referendum, which was that not all parts of the country had clearly felt well served by the policies of previous governments and European Union policies, that her government would be a government for all people in the country, of all regions and all classes, and that she was a very determined unionist and that she would take forward the negotiations on behalf of all parts of the United Kingdom. Nicola Sturgeon, um, a very uh, also um, skillful politician uh, in Scotland, also made it very clear, very quickly, that Scotland was concerned about the position, having voted so clearly to stay in the European Union. And Mrs May equally quickly made it clear that she would fully involve Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales and other devolved regions in the UK in the negotiations in Brussels. So having had a moment of, of, of really very considerable upheaval in British politics, the situation then took and has taken a rather clear mandate. That doesn't mean that that's going to be an easy mandate to take forward. I think the future of politics in Europe and, and America doesn't mean I should go into all of those details. But clearly, the biggest question mark is the extent to which we seek to remain as fully as possible members of the European single market, but at the same time reconcile the clear message from parts of the referendum, which were that the migration issue and the seemingly uncontrolled, because of course European Union citizens are free to come and go and to live and to work in the UK, the uncontrolled migration of European Union citizens was something that certainly resonated as part of the campaign. And I think that's a very clear um, sort of message that's come through, that these are areas that are going to have to be reconciled in some way. But is the UK going to adopt a position or seek to adopt a position to, to negotiate with the European Union to remain very close to the existing model but with some differentials? Or shall we adopt other solutions? And there are various models obviously of countries which are very closely associated with the European Union. Or are we going to do something quite different, quite bespoke? And are we going to forge, um, um, as politicians have certainly said, a bold and ambitious role to take forward what is undoubtedly going to remain a very free trading Britain, a very internationalist Britain, a very multilateralist Britain, um, a global Britain. And that's certainly, I think, where clear consensus in the UK is coming through, that we are absolutely going to maintain a, our traditional but also future-looking um, role in the world. We are still uh, the country in the G7 that spends 2% of our budget on defence and 0.7% of our budget um, GDP on aid. And it's absolutely clear that there's full national consensus behind that. What there is not yet clear consensus on, because there is no yet um, full agreement on, is how we're going to approach that vision. And because we are still considering those options, we don't yet know the timing and people often say to me, have you now left the European Union? And uh, I have to point out that, no, we haven't, that the vote was taken. But until we trigger the Article 50, we are not even in the process of leaving the European Union. And that process is still another two years after that, or possibly longer, if the other European member states also agreed on that position. 